This is Lily Cotilla. Welcome to Live In 4D. Low oxytocin and or a more specific niche known as narcissists plays out roles with respect to parenting that can be deleterious for a child's psyche over the course of time. Whether it's malicious or not depends on the individual type of narcissist parent. But what I'm going to discuss is the effects on the child. So we're all narcissists to some extent, I guess, being human egos and enjoying to see mirrors or clones of self because it falsely validates that the individual views or perspectives or ideas or ways of being are um, appreciated in the world and valued when somebody else takes them on and or agrees with them. This is why narcissists claim to quote discard their quote victims is because at the beginning when there are reflections of the narcissist they're really enjoyed and appreciated and loved and then when a partner for example starts having his or her own views or disagreeing with the classic narcissist then that reflection of self is no longer what's liked to be seen Therefore, the mirror gets shattered and the narcissist moves on to the next quote victim. Do I look at it this way? No, I agree with the premise, but in terms of victim and or the maliciousness behind it, I don't really think so. I just believe it it stems from well, it's intergenerationally transmitted for sure. And when a self, a child, isn't encouraged to be his or her own identity, to have his own likes of clothing, of food preferences, of friends, of ways of talking, when that child isn't When a space isn't created for that child to be his authentic self and he's forced to shut down the various aspects of personality unique to that spiritual being, then he just reflects the cloned pieces of parent that the parent in cunning, baffling, and powerful ways um, magnifies and enhances through language, you know? Like, let's say the kid wants to have a yellow car. Oh, sweetie, yellow cars are for nerds. The blue cars are the ones that you want to be playing with. And so then the child doesn't trust his or her own instinct or desire that the yellow car is okay because it's for nerds. Therefore, he'll pick the blue cars to be playing with, even though it's they're not connected to his heart and what his spirit self wants. Or, oh, honey, you shouldn't wear those pink um, pump shoes, patent leather, that's the word I was looking for. Nobody wears those. You need to be wearing the, the Nikes. Those are what the cool kids wear. Well, the, the kid really wants to be wearing the pink patent leather shoes, but he or she's shamed out of being that authentic self. And so she just takes on these mirrored reflections of father or of mother because of the shaming or the comparison or the guilting or all the above. So this can really have a ramification on the child's developing ego over the course of time, as you might imagine. Because if the self is shut down, it is depressed, it can result in depression, alcoholism, eating disorders, whatever might load up to the surface because that spiritual identity is just crushed. Then, and then the life force is struggles with being happy in the world and, and finds all these false facets of attempting to thrive. So it's really important to be in touch 
with yourself or your significant other, the parent you're sharing, raising a child with, to even if it isn't in the parental uh, idea of what's best for the child, to let the child discover his or her own journey. Pick and choose your battles. You know, perhaps stay attached to a concept that really you think is fundamentally important in terms of imprinting or influencing the developing psyche. Not whether or not he chooses yellow cars or blue cars or patent leather or pink shoes or Nikes. So allow some space for the child to be his true spiritual self. And in the long run of life, the big picture, you'll be creating an amazing being or contributing to it anyway.